Hi, in this lecture, we're going to start to talk about dynamics, aka dynamic range. So the dynamic range of a given audio signal or program refers to the variances in level of the signal. There are many different types and many different ways to measure dynamic range, depending on what you're trying to measure, is it the loudness or the variances in amplitude, and what time scale you're trying to measure them in. So let's first tackle microdynamics. So microdynamics are more like the dynamics of the waveform themselves. It's the dynamics in a really, really small time scale. And adjustments to those dynamics tend to result in a change of sound, sometimes a change of tonality, because we're affecting the dynamics in such a small time frame that it's actually modulating or even distorting the actual waveform itself. Macro dynamics are more like the differences in the sections of a song in terms of volume and any other way that we might measure it. So, for example, if I turn down the verse using volume automation, I'm more affecting the macro dynamics, the larger time frames when we are manipulating dynamic range. There are many reasons that we might change dynamic range in the box and when we're recording. Sometimes we need to reduce the dynamic range to avoid clipping, or sometimes we need to reduce the dynamic range to make something more consistent in a mix. Sometimes we need to increase the dynamic range Examples of that are gating. So a gate turns down the signal when it falls below a certain threshold. That is effectively expansion. So expanding the dynamics for a particular purpose in that case. And others where we are affecting the more micro dynamics are like peak limiting. So a peak limiter, we pull it on a channel or we pull it on a signal to limit the peak value without affecting the average volume of the signal. So these are some examples of the different types of dynamic manipulation, but let's have a look at some ways that we actually measure the dynamics of a signal. So in Logic Now, I have this song loaded up, and if you just look at the waveform, it's quite clear what are the louder parts and what are the softer parts. It's not absolutely clear how loud each part is because it's just a waveform and it's a very limited way to look at loudness. But I think we can safely say that these parts here are the louder parts of the song and these are the quieter parts. But let's actually start to measure that with some meters. So on my Stereo Art channel here, I have Logic's level meter. And the reason I'm using that is because I just want some peak and RMS readings. So let's have a look at that. The devil's in your mind And daggers in your eyes Okay, so we've got some values here now. So let's actually start to deconstruct what those numbers represent. So the peak value, again, is just the highest amplitude value of the waveform. So again, if you picture a waveform, the very top of the waveform is the peak value, and the RMS represents the power of the entire waveform, the volume of the waveform itself, not just one snapshot of it, not just the very top of the waveform. Now, what's interesting and what is very useful sometimes to know is the difference between the peak and the RMS values. Some meters on the market use a unit called DR, which stands for dynamic range, to measure the difference between the peak and the RMS. This is an example of microdynamics. It refers to the dynamics inside the sound, inside the waveform, as opposed to long passages of audio. The microdynamics can tell us a lot about the clarity and how much headroom is inside the signal. If you find yourself with really, really small microdynamic values or DR values, differences between peak and RMS, 
that might be a sign of something that's just too compressed. But if they are really, really long, that tells you it's a really, really dynamic piece and that the peak value sometimes is well in excess of the RMS value or the average RMS value over time. Generally speaking, you know, an EDM track will likely have a smaller DR value, a smaller difference between peak and RMS at the loudest moments. And maybe an orchestral or even a jazz piece might have bigger dynamics. But these are generalizations. But that's the sort of thing you are looking for when looking at peak and RMS values. So like I said before, peak and RMS by themselves can be quite useful. It's good to know the peak value because we want to avoid clipping. But it's also good to know the RMS value because it tells us more about the power of the waveform. But the difference between the two for me is a very good indicator of clarity and punch in a mix or in a single signal. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.